My name's Steve Gladstone. Uh, Heli Operations is a business that we've, we've uh, had running now for just over 10 years. Um, we started out uh, initially providing support um, to various helicopter operating companies, including CHC and Bristow's, uh, in terms of crewing, equipment, and then latterly some uh, regulatory and documentation work. And we've now moved into, uh, we were asked by the German Navy whether we could operate a Seeking helicopter and provide some training uh, similar to the training they used to receive from the Royal Navy for their air crew in parallel with the uh, Royal Navy training. Uh, the Seeking, having recently gone out of service with the Royal Navy, meant that the Royal Navy weren't training their air crew any longer and they needed to outsource some Seeking training, which is uh, why they came to Heli Operations. And when did that start? Uh, the first flying with the German students started September last year, so September 2017. And the plan is for a year's contract um, to train 12 of their pilots, eight of which will be trained as ab initios, um, and four uh, will undergo command upgrade training. Uh, and we've, we're pretty much two thirds of the way through them now. And we're based here at your base at Portland? Yeah, Portland um, is, uh, uh, as you know, Portland used to be a naval air station. In fact, it was a naval uh, base as well. They've been flying helicopters here for the last 60 years. Um, in the last 10 years, with, with the close of the Portland base, the Coast Guard set up a um, station here to continue the work that the Navy were doing, providing search and rescue. It was a, um, a daytime only SAR base as part of UK SAR. And with the recent reorganization of UK SAR, um, the rationalization of it, Portland was considered um, um, not required as part of the 10 base plan that's currently in uh, um, um, place around the UK. So knowing that it was going to become surplus and having an involvement with the Portland base as part of the Coast Guard um, service, uh, we lobbied the government uh, and were able to make a bid together with a number of other um, um, possible purchases and we were successful last year in uh, buying Portland. And uh, could you tell us a bit more about the uh, German Navy pilot training? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, the German Navy pilot training had historically been completed by the Royal Navy and it was uh, on Sea Kings and they learnt, um, they converted to Sea Kings uh, from the Gazelle alongside the Royal Navy colleagues and they basically flew the Sea King Mark V um, and then operated the Seeking Mark V, not so much in the anti-submarine role, but in its search and rescue role. So the German students historically had gone back to Germany to join a frontline SAR squadron. So with that need still in place um, and the, and the um, uh, forthcoming replacement of their Seeking Mark 41 with NH90, uh, which is due to be operational in 2022, they needed to fill the gap between now and then, and they requested the Navy um, to assist or continue to assist, and clearly the Seeking training pipeline has stopped, but the Navy now support heli operations delivering that training um, by providing the aircraft and some of the technical support, together with Leonardo, to now enable us to do the training. So our starting point was the training that they used to receive from the Royal Navy, which was specifically designed for the Royal Navy, which uh, by definition meant by the time they went back to the squadrons, the German Navy had to do conversion courses for them to fly the Mark 41, a few changes in procedures. Um, and so we, were, we had a great opportunity to work with the Germans to actually change the course and tailor the course to exactly what they wanted. The input standard from the German students has changed now because previously the Royal Navy trained them on gazelles, uh, whereas now the German Navy trained the students on the EC-135. So they come to us as a multi-pilot trained um, um, twin uh, operators, uh, twin helicopter operators. So that's the input standard. The output standard is such that they um, join the German search and rescue base at Nordholz. So the Germans, when they were looking at a solution to their training gap, they were looking to outsource. They wanted to pretty much carry on what was uh, uh, the sort of level of training, the standard of training, the content they had with the Royal Navy. And it was a great opportunity for us to sort of launch uh, heli operations as an operator rather than just a support company. And you operate Royal, ex Royal Navy Seeking Mark Fives? Yeah, the Seeking went out of service. Uh, Seeking went out of service in 2016. Um, and it went out of service uh, in April 2016 and that was a mark, the last Seekings went out as a Mark V search and rescue. Because prior to that the Mark VI Seekings had been replaced by the Merlin, although the Navy still operate the Mark VII Seeking until the end of September this year. So the Seekings we're flying were retired in April 2016. 
and they're the Seeking Mark V, which is specifically fit in the search and rescue role. So it's very similar to the Mark VI, which is an anti-submarine uh, uh, um, fit, um, but it obviously has had the sonar and the sonic station removed. But it does still have the radar in the back, and it has all the automatics uh, necessary for search and rescue flying. So you, uh, you not only do conversion to type, but you do uh, part mission training? Yeah, so we, uh, the way the Navy used to uh, train on the Seeking, certainly when I went through training, is they split it into advanced flying training, which would be converting onto a large multi-crew helicopter, and that was known as advanced flying training, or AFT, and then you went on to OFT, which is operational flying training. You then learnt to fly the helicopter in the roles for which it was uh, designed. So we have a two-stage um, course for the ab initios, which is, again, to convert them to a multi-engine um, heavy helicopter, although they already come from the multi-engine uh, 135. Um, but we still convert to the heavy, the crew environment, and then we, we um, complete the operational flying training, which is search and rescue, uh, i.e. cliff winching boats and operating with survivors in the water. So that's, that's the level of uh, training, and that training is continuing to be fine-tuned by the Germans to ensure that they get the best use out of the uh, hours that we allocate for the course. And that's day and night flying? Day and night, absolutely. Um, and uh, clearly we've got, we've got radar operators in the back, so we're able to, to simulate a full, a full crew so they get the uh, uh, complete training package. And I understand you're going to be at the Farnborough International Air Show this year? Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, Farnborough week after next. Uh, we're taking uh, one of the two aircraft down. We're planning to take XV-666 which we were lucky enough to have, uh, is perhaps the Navy's most iconic seeking, uh, known as Damien uh, from the 666. And uh, Damien's going to be down there, and she's flying in this Friday, actually. Uh, and we have a stand uh, really to try and advertise um, um, the services that we're now providing, uh, because clearly we fly um, uh, Damien under military flying rules. Uh, it's still a military-registered uh, helicopter, and we use uh, ex-military QHIs. And you do civilian SAR as well? Um, we, we provide support to civilian companies for search and rescue. We've, we've been providing crews, services and support to Bristow Helicopters in UK and CHC in UK. Uh, we provided the manning to the Portland base before it closed. Uh, we've got a crew out in Ireland at the moment with CHC with the Irish Coast Guard. And until recently, um, I and some of my colleagues within the company flew the S-92 out in Ireland for their Coast Guard. And the future? The future really is, uh, we, we believe we've got a, a little bit of a niche market at the moment providing uh, military training, uh, and that can happen all the time that the UK government are happy to support it uh, with, with partner nations. So we feel that we're in the position where we can deliver or we can accept some outsourcing from a variety of different countries. So we're exploring uh, various opportunities for various uh, different military aircraft in different roles. So that's the future that we're focusing on um, at the moment and hoping to get a continuation of the German contract.